Hey, what's up you guys? It's Matt here, back again with another video. Uh, I haven't made a video in about a month now, so I kind of wanted to give you guys a quick little update and uh, show you guys the pieces that I've been gravitating towards uh, for the fall winter 22 season. So what this video is going to be is going in depth on uh, about 20 pieces that I've been really gravitating towards uh, during this uh, time of the year. So instead of showing you guys uh, a huge pickup video where I can't go too in depth on each piece unless it'll take you know a really long time, uh, this video will be showcasing kind of the pieces I have come to love just with a little bit more detail than my regular pickup videos. Um, I plan to do these type of uh, videos in the future on the channel. So that's just like season specific favorites and I think you guys are really going to enjoy. So we're going to start off with bottoms, move on to tops, do outerwear, and then finish off with footwear. And yeah, I really hope you guys enjoy. So let's move on to the first piece. Okay, so starting off with bottoms, we have probably one of the pairs of pants that I've longed for um, for the most amount of time during this, you know, kind of Visvim journey. So I've always wanted a pair of the D17 Solstice Sculpture denim in my size. I found countless pairs of journeymen um, and even D17s, but just never in my size and never fit me the way I wanted it to. Um, so I came across this pair on Grailed and I knew after about two years of wanting this that I knew I had to pull the trigger. Um, I got a pretty decent deal in my opinion on it. Um, so really happy about the purchase. So this is actually the 01 Slim cut and damage 17. Um, I find the 01 Slim to be uh, the best cut for me that Visma makes. Um, it's the most flattering on my body. And uh, for the 01 Slim, I tend to go true to size. So these are tag size 32 in the waist and 30 in the length. Um, these are from the uh, spring summer 2020 collection and so for those of you who aren't familiar with the D17s uh, they're characterized by uh, pretty natural fading along the thighs and legs and then they finish it off with this incredible washing distressing and uh, you know kind of like this patch repair work throughout and they also do some hand paint splatter detailing um, as well just really nice attention to detail. Uh, these kind of exemplify everything that I've come to love about Visvim. Um, you know, a lot of brands try to make these really, really distressed jeans and they don't come off as um, really authentic and um, they just look like they were pre-distressed or pre-damaged and they came straight from a factory and it doesn't look like a vintage pair of jeans. Uh, but I think what Visum does so well is replicating authentic vintage. Um, so these definitely could be a pair of vintage Levi's 501, 501s that have been worn, washed, and repaired countless of times. And uh, that's something that is very hard to um, achieve authentically. Um, but I think it's because they do everything by hand and it really um, exemplifies the different post-processing that Visum is capable of doing. Um, this also has a button fly. Um, Owen Slims typically have this button fly, a high rise, and then kind of like a slim straight fit throughout the leg. Um, it's sort of like the Levi's 501, just with a more slightly tapered leg. Uh, super flattering. I'll show you guys what they look like on body um, as I talk here, uh, but it's got the typical Social score for uh, details. So we have an indigo dyed uh, suede buckskin uh, back patch. And then we also have, again, more distressing along the back pockets here. And then it does feature the hidden zipper on, on this back pocket as well. Um, but yeah, just really, really nice jeans. Super wearable. Um, as I said, these are pieces that I've been gravitating towards lately. Um, I really like the uh, kind of distressed nature of these and it really pairs well with other Visum distressed things um, without going too much over the top. 
Um, this is probably about as far as I can get with distressed items. So any more than this, I think it would be a little bit too much for me. Um, but yeah, really, really enjoying these and excited to wear these uh, for years to come. So moving on to the second pair, we have a pair of denim that is probably one of the best purchases that I've made from Visvim in, I would say, the past year. Um, just because I think with Visvim clothing, you really want to um, go for the uh, most wearable pieces and pieces that you can um, pair with many things in the wardrobe. Um, so versatility is a huge thing. Just because, um, because it's such a high price point, um, you don't want to spend a lot of money on an outlandish uh, piece that is um, not as wearable as another piece just because your cost per wear will be super high just because uh, you won't be comfortable to wear this thing um, many times because it is so outlandish. Uh, so this piece to me is a very versatile and uh, classic piece from Visvim but it still has the Visvim flair that everyone's looking for. Uh, so these may come off as just a regular pair of raw denim, uh, but this is actually their Fall Winter 22 uh, Mud Overdye raw denim. Uh, so again, we have the 01 Slim Cut in the same sizing as before, so a 32-30. Um, and as I said before, these are from the uh, Fall Winter 2022 collection. Uh, so, for those of you who aren't familiar, their raw denim is their um, unsanforized, I believe it's 13 ounce raw selvage denim, and it actually has uh, red selvage piping um, throughout, as you can see. And then once they uh, create this raw denim, they actually mud over dye it at um, Amami, Japan, which is pretty much the only island in the entire world that can produce this mud over dye treatment and it's extremely expensive to um, make and it leaves the the items that you mud over dye with this incredible vintage worn in characteristic uh, so because these are unsanforized it means that they do no post processing um, after production so usually with if you buy an unsanforized pair of denim you should uh, soak them right when you get them to um, essentially shrink down the denim uh, before you actually wear. But because they did a um, pretty much a one wash process just with mud, um, these have already shrinked down so you don't have to worry about any more shrinkage after the first wash. And um, they do have different one wash characteristics to them. So as you can see, they do have a pretty slubby and hairy texture on the out, outside of it. And I don't know if you can tell, but it does leave um, sort of this mud overlay on the denim. They do um, do a one wash after the mud processing just to get most of the mud off. Um, but it does leave sort of like a, a residue kind of along the seams. As you, can, as you can see, the back patch is actually a little bit dirty itself from the processing. And it does have typical um, details that you see on the social sculpture denim. So we still have the uh, integrated hidden back uh, zipper pocket. And same fit as the ones before. So high rise and then the slim straight fit throughout the leg. Uh, but I've been wearing these for I think two weeks now. I'm doing a 30-day wear test on them just to see what kind of uh, fading and wear we can get out of them. Um, but as you can see, I'm already starting to, to develop some pretty nice whiskering along the leg and uh, or honeycombs. And then these are the actual whiskers that you get kind of on this uh, hip area of the denim. But yeah, super happy with the progress and I'm um, excited to see what this mud over dye processing kind of does to the fades of the raw denim. Um, that's pretty much the what's enticing about these. No one really knows 
what a mud dyed indigo yarn will do to a pair of denim after years of wear. Um, no one knows how they'll fade and whatnot. So that's why that's what intrigued me, and that's why I decided to get a pair. Um, I pay Japanese retail for these, and uh, I'm really, really happy with my purchase. Um, I'm going to get a lot of wear, wear out of these um, just because of the color. I think it goes well with pretty much anything in my wardrobe, and uh, really, really excited about this purchase. And uh, hopefully, I can get some pretty sick uh, fading out of them as well. Okay, so moving on to the top section of the video. Um, as I said before, I know this is a fall winter specific uh, video, but here in Florida, fall really gets below 50 degrees or 60 for that matter. Um, so I can still wear short sleeve uh, button up shirts. So I'm gonna show you three of them that I uh, have come to love. Uh, I didn't expect it uh, for a couple of these, but they've actually been uh, super wearable in my collection. Uh, so the first one, we have this uh, Catskill uh, shirt. This one is tagged a size three and from the Fall Winter 2020 collection. Uh, it's made out of this incredible uh, cotton silk blend fabric. Um, so this is extremely light and breathable and really nice uh, hand feel. Um, and if I get closer, you can see sort of this overlay embroidery um, that they do on the fabric that gives this a really nice visual texture. And it also has tactile texture as well. Um, really, really cool processing that they did on this. I'm not really sure how they actually um, applied this stitched fabric, uh, but it, nonetheless, it's super, super cool. Uh, and again, with that, the silhouette of this is really enticing to me. Uh, so if you can tell, it has sort of an A-line silhouette where it gets wider as it gets towards the bottom of the shirt. Uh, we have a, uh, a front button placket, a extremely oversized kind of open collar lapel, um, one uh, medium sized chest pocket, and then we have this really cool uh, seam down the center. Um, usually you see this kind of seam in coveralls, uh, where it actually runs from the top all the way down with this kind of tapering effect down the center, if you can see. Uh, this also has really nice oversized uh, buffalo horn buttons. Uh, I think buffalo horn is probably my favorite uh, type of material that uh, they make for buttons. Um, just really cool texture on them. And if you get close, you can really see um, the different variations of a color that was uh, on the horn itself. And uh, yeah, this has a pretty wide and boxy cut, and then it actually is cropped, and it does have some elongated sleeves. So you guys will see how this fits on me, but the sleeves pretty much hit uh, right where my elbow is. So it's a definitely a relaxed fit. Uh, definitely going to be good for um, spring, summer, especially. Um, I tend to wear this either open or closed. It works pretty well either way. And we have the typical Vision tag there. And here's the back. But yeah, uh, really interesting shirt. Definitely from afar, it just looks like a pretty simple shirt. But when you look at the details and look at the different silhouettes, like the oversized lapel and then the actual um, cotton silk fabric with this incredible patterning. Um, you definitely see the attention to detail and uh, you guys could probably tell why this is uh, you know a wearable piece for me um, just because of the color and then the uh, the details themselves make it a really interesting and awesome piece to add to my collection. Uh, moving on, we have, I think this is a new season piece. So I picked this up from uh, Notre in Chicago. They're doing a uh, Black Friday, I think like 60% off deal. Um, when I first saw this shirt come out um, in lookbooks and product shots, um, I personally loved the way it looked. I knew that it was gonna be really good for where I live in Florida. 
and uh, it seems that this one was super underrated. Not a lot of people were talking about it, um, but this is the uh, Weber shirt striped from the Fall Winter 2022 collection. Uh, this one is tag size four. It does fit pretty slim uh, to size, so I decided to size up one. My usual true to size is a size three in Visvim, um, but it uses this incredible striped cotton linen uh, woven fabric. And I'll just show you guys it up close. It has really nice texture and uh, visual kind of unevenness. If you can tell, but it's almost like a, you know, blanket woven fabric and it literally has this like these variations throughout, um, which is really cool to see. Um, we have a little bit of a darting here on the shoulders, um, just to give you a little bit more extra room and comfort while you wear. Uh, we have a uh, A-line silhouette as well with this one. It has a pretty cropped length and then a regular fit throughout the chest and arms. And uh, we have an open collar design. And then uh, I believe these are also uh, buffalo horn buttons as well. And then one chest pocket. We also have this really cool uh, Kofu detailing on the hem there. You see this mostly on their newer season pieces. Um, I really like the attention to detail there. And then it does have this uh, sort of fold over hem here, if you could see. Um, maybe it's easier to see on the back, but there is this square hem where the fabric is actually um, folded over itself. And it gives it a lot better structure here on the hem of the shirt and gives it a really nice silhouette as you can see. And I'll show this one on body again. Um, but yeah, a super wearable piece. And to me, texture in a shirt is super important. Um, I'm a very tactile person when it comes to clothing. So when you can actually feel um, this unevenness in clothing, it really entices me. And uh, I love the um, uneven visual nature as well. Um, it's kind of like the wabi-sabi. Japanese um, ideology where you kind of seek uh, non-perfect items just because um, it's just a little bit cooler than a streamlined perfect um, item that everyone has the same thing. Um, when you have something that's a little bit different than everyone else, even if they get the same item, theirs is just a little bit different than yours. That is kind of what I love about Visbum as a whole. So. This shirt is uh, very cool to me and very happy um, to add it to kind of like my uh, patterned button up shirt collection. So finishing off this button up shirt lineup, this item is probably along with the D17, one of those items that I longed for the most uh, with this Vism collection. Um, just one of the few pieces that I saw, saw the price of it and knew that it was gonna be a while before I actually could track one down and that was in my size and that was a price that I was willing to pay. Um, but this one is a spring summer 2019 um, ICT free edge Kazuri shirt um, in this really nice light indigo um, dye. Uh, this one is a uh, size 3 and uh, fits pretty true to size. Uh, the free edge kind of has a oversized and boxy silhouette. Um, it does have an open collar and then a, a hidden front button placket. Um, these buttons actually do use the um, buffalo horn buttons that I talked about previously. Um, it also does have a chest pocket and then a straight hem at the bottom and so what makes this piece uh, so interesting and so expensive is the uh, uh, Kazuri cotton fabric that is woven on uh, a hand loom machine. Uh, this fabric takes an extremely long amount of time uh, to produce and um, 
that is what warrants the high price point. Um, so there's a dis dissertation on their website that kind of explains the process of it uh, that you guys can dive more, uh, you know, deep into. Uh, but pretty much, it's it's a hand uh, woven fabric using a uh, hand loom machine, and it's just an amazing, amazing fabric. It has incredible uh, visual and tactile texture. As I said before, texture is a super big thing for me. Um, so this piece is particularly awesome in that aspect. And then the pattern itself kind of has, has this uh, native um, vibe to it, um, which I really like. I pretty much don't have anything in my collection that's like this. Um, so it was definitely a really good addition. Um, much like most of their ICT pa um, pieces, it does have a uh, Kofu patch at the neck there. Um, this one does also have the darting here at the shoulders just to give you that little bit extra room and comfort during uh, wearing. And yeah, uh, just to say the least, if you guys already know, you know this piece is absolutely incredible and I feel extremely grateful and proud uh, to be an owner of this piece. And uh, so finishing off the tops, of course, for fall winter, you kind of have to have uh, the go-to hoodie. Uh, so I had two hoodies previously in my collection um, that I loved before adding this one. And one of those hoodies was a really, really washed out, uh, natural mud dyed uh, jumbo hoodie from the fall winter 17 collection. And I've owned multiple natural dyed uh, hoodies and sweatshirts from Visvim, but for some reason that fall winter 2017 version of the mud dyed hoodie that I had was so soft and the dye on it was so cool, it was so washed out and it was by far my favorite hoodie of all. So I was browsing eBay and I saw the indigo version of that mud dyed hoodie. So this is the same season, same year, uh, fall winter 2017, size three, but instead of natural mud dyed, this one is in natural indigo. I got an absolute steal on this, and this one is just as good as the mud dyed one that I had previously loved and already loved, and so I knew that this one would be a great addition. Uh, the color itself is absolutely incredible. As you guys can see, it does have some really nice fading effect and uh, variations of color throughout the fabric. And this cotton that they used is extremely soft. I don't know what, I mean, it looks like a, just a mid-weight terry, but I guess through, uh, you know, consistent washing and wear, it softens up beautifully and uh, it's it's absolutely amazing. These two are probably one of the two hoodies that I've loved the most in this in my entire fashion career or fashion journey. And I don't see myself ever getting rid of them. Um, they're so cozy, so soft, and I love the fact that they will change over time as I wear them, as I wash them. The color will fade and wear very beautifully. And uh, yeah, very ha happy with this one. Uh, I think a size three is perfect for this season. Uh, I've had other size three uh, jumbo hoodies from Vism that set felt way too long. Uh, these ones do have a pretty tight hem, so it actually um, kind of folds over as it um, sits on you. And that's just because it could be the weight of this uh, fabric makes the silhouette a lot better than other season hoodies um, but yeah fall winter 17 hoodies if you guys are interested please please try these out um, probably one of my favorites uh, from Vism and yeah uh, it does also have this really nice uh, silver kind of drawstring um, lacing hardware and uh, kangaroo pocket oversized sleeves you guys know I mean this is like their typical jumbo silhouette um, we also do have kind of like this ghost stitching here at the neck 
And uh, yeah, really, really happy. And uh, that's it for the top section. So now we will move on to outerwear. Okay, and moving on to the outerwear section, by far probably the most exciting thing that um, I get to wear in the fall winter months, just because in Florida we have maybe a month of cold weather, maybe. Uh, so it actually gives me a chance to actually, you know, wear the majority of my wardrobe, which is outerwear. Um, very impractical for where I live to have so much outerwear, but I just love this outerwear and I just can't stop buying it. Hopefully I move to a place one day um, that I can, you know, wear more of my wardrobe. Um, but for now, this is how it's gonna be. So I wanna show you guys the pieces that I'm most excited about uh, that I have worn and will be wearing uh, for the colder weather here. And uh, the first piece is probably a piece that none of you guys have seen before. Um, if you can see from the tag, this is a super, super old piece. And uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, this is the very first 101 jacket from Visvim. Um, it was from the uh, spring summer 2008 season, if I believe correctly. Um, incredible fabric on this. This is a almost button-up shirt type fabric. It's a cotton piquet and uh, maybe a little bit thicker than a button-up shirt, but definitely not um, sort of like an outerwear thickness. So this is kind of like a mid-layer. Um, perfect, perfect for styling under things or if it's not too cold, cold out and you just want to do a t-shirt this is unbelievable to wear over it it feels very soft and smooth um, and silky on the skin and uh, the fact they were making pieces to this caliber back in 2008 um, just shows you how good of a brand it was um, so it does have the typical features of uh, you know the 101 jacket so we have the typical type 2 vintage Levi's um, silhouette and details front button placket kind of um, lowered um, chest pockets and then uh, we do have hidden uh, side zippers and adjustable back funny enough they have the adjustable back but there's no second button to actually make the silhouette smaller or not so this is just kind of like a detail that doesn't really do anything um, and then we do have a um, python back patch which is really interesting to feel um, it's real python so if you guys have ever owned one of these older pieces you'll know what i mean um, but it's just a really interesting fabric and i guess animal leather and skin um, other than that we do have uh, some darting here along the shoulders again gives you that more room uh, sort of an open collar design here at the neck and again we have the old tag but yeah that's pretty much it uh, another really cool thing with this is the uh, side zipper pockets actually use if you can see that is a Swiss Riri zipper and usually with the 101 denim jackets or the wool linen versions or any of those, they come with regular zippers. And you only usually see the Riri on the uh, suede or leather um, Italy versions of the 101. But I guess back then they used Riri uh, for all zippers. And uh, so that's a really cool attention to detail there. Um, and they do have their own um, branded silver buttons, if you can see. And these buttons actually haven't changed um, in a long time. Anytime they use branded buttons, um, they look exactly like this. So they've nailed down that design way back in 2008 and they haven't changed it since, uh, which is really cool to me. And yeah. So that is the jacket, pretty basic, but the fact 
is uh, it's so wearable with the color and then the uh, the weight itself um, lends it to be a really versatile piece if you want to wear it as a mid layer or an outer layer depending on um, what the weather is like uh, this is just one of those pieces that does it all and uh, super excited to um, add this to the collection uh, the next piece uh, if you guys are familiar with the channel you'll know that I actually used to own this piece uh, I bought it maybe one year ago from the real real and uh, at the time I didn't really see a need for it in my wardrobe, um, so then I sold it, and I have regretted selling it ever since. And so I always contemplated um, hitting up the buyer and saying, like, hey, you know, can I buy this back from you? But I never did it. Um, I He seemed really excited about the purchase at the time, so I didn't want to bother him and um, take, you know, ask for the piece that he loved back. But one day I was browsing on Grailed and I saw that the guy I sold it to was actually uh, planning on selling this and he had, he had listed it. So immediately I hit him up on Instagram and I explained, you know, I have regretted this thing ever since I sold it to you. Please, please let me buy it back. And uh, he did. And it's probably one of the best decisions I've made uh, as of late. Uh, so for those of you who aren't familiar, this is the... Uh, Roadster swing top in this incredible Wale corduroy. Uh, this one is tagged a size three, and I believe it's the yeah spring summer 2017 collection. Uh, this is the very very first Roadster swing top. Um, so nowadays the Roadster swing tops has a pretty oversized and boxy and cropped silhouette, uh, but these have much more of a regular fit as you'll see on body um, so we have regular fit sleeves with adjustable cuffs a front uh, zipper placket with a brass riri zipper with a really nice uh, uh, zipper pull and then the zipper itself is actually uh, gold plated if you can see from there uh, we do have some uh, slanted inset pockets and then one chest pocket with this incredible uh, lightning embroidery, if you can see. And then the fabric itself, as I said before, it's this really, really thick Wale corduroy fabric. Um, super warm and uh, really, really nice to see. It does have waist adjusters, but again, like I said on the 101, this doesn't have a second button to actually tighten the waist. So pretty much it's a detail that doesn't really do anything. It's just, I guess, for looks. But it does have some hidden drawstring um, lacing here that you can use to um, adjust the silhouette. As you can see right here, you, it's pretty much like a drawstring and you can adjust the torso um, to fit tighter if you'd like. And then the last piece, it's probably my most favorite, um, is this Wale check fabric um, on the lining. And this really, really elevates the piece and gives it that um, cool, maybe vintage look. Um, a lot of pieces back in the days actually had like check cotton fabric linings and uh, it's just really really cool pop of color if you wear it open this thing kind of shows a little bit and it's a really really awesome thing to see and it does have uh, linen lined uh, sleeves as well which makes it a little bit more comfortable and breathable um, you know for the uh, arms themselves and yeah, I love this piece and really, really happy to add it back to the collection. Okay, and moving on to the next piece, uh, we have the um, ICT 101 XX in this incredible moleskin fabric. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar, the 101 XX takes inspiration from the traditional um, 101 jacket from Visvim, but elevates it with a oversized silhouette. 
so we do have some drop shoulders here um, pretty wide in the chest and then cropped in the body but it does have all the typical details that you would see in the regular 101 so we do have the two chest pockets a button front placket and open collar adjustable cuffs adjustable waist and then this really really nice um, natural mud dyed brain tan buckskin suede patch with the ICT um, N hand embroidered um, stitching on that and uh, what makes this piece special other than the silhouette is the incredible moleskin um, cotton fabric that he's used on it so with wear this thing will fade and age beautifully um, much like you would see sort of on a leather jacket um, and when I saw and heard the potential of uh, fading and wear with this jacket I was very enticed to see and to wear it and to uh, you know make this jacket my own and create my own unique fades with it much like you would do on a pair of raw denim and uh, so yeah that's why I decided to pick this one up I got a really good deal on it um, so I decided to try it out and I'm really happy that I did uh, the 101 XX silhouette is definitely a more flattering cut if you're sort of on the heavier side or the more muscular um, it's just a super flattering oversized silhouette and super comfortable as well definitely if you want to layer hoodies or sweatshirts underneath um, this jacket is kind of like the perfect um, one to do that with and uh, it's a really really nice piece uh, the moleskin is extremely soft it almost feels like a suede like fabric and uh, I believe moleskin does stretch with wear as well uh, this does have branded buttons and as I said before as you can see these are the same exact buttons that are on the 101 from 2008 so it's pretty impressive that they nailed a design and didn't change it and um, yeah really really cool piece again we have the um, Kofu uh, fabric patch at the neck there oh and as you guys probably are wondering this one is tagged to size 2. I tend to size down in the XX compared to my regular 101 size, which I wear a size 3 in. Uh, and then this one is from the 2021 ICT collection. And So yeah, really, really cool piece. Definitely the color itself is going to lend itself um, to being pretty versatile. This light brown color is going to go well with greens and blues and whatnot. Um, so yeah, really, really nice purchase, and I think it's going to be worth the money I paid, and uh, yeah, really happy with it. Uh, moving on, this is one of the pieces that I always longed for uh, since it came out last year. I think this is a fall-winter 2021 piece, and this is the Lumber Shirt in Tweed. Uh, this one is a size 2. The lumber does fit pretty oversized, so I suggest you guys size down from your regular true to size. Um, so I went with a size 2. Um, I do have two other lumber shirts that I love and wear to death. So I thought that sort of like a um, shirt jacket uh, version of those lumbers would be really nice for my wardrobe. Um, this one does use a tweed fabric that's woven with uh, multiple fabrics. Uh, I believe they use a wool, linen, and silk uh, blend fabric. And as you can see, the texture and kind of the details from the uh, woven fabric is absolutely incredible. I find myself staring at this fabric for a long time and you can just see all the quality and detail in it and it's just absolutely incredible the lumber typically has a front button placket two chest pockets an adjustable cuff and 
not seen on most lumbers because this is sort of like a heavier midweight jacket. Um, these tweed lumbers actually have this incredible rayon lining on the uh, top yoke in this really cool pink salmon color that works so incre incredibly well with this brownish tone. And we also see the same lining um, along the sleeves as well. So if you want, you can even flip it up and kind of show that rayon detail on the sleeve. And it does make it um, a lot more comfortable than it would be without. Uh, this tweed is relatively itchy, so I don't recommend wearing it as the only layer. You definitely need either a t-shirt or a long sleeve t-shirt um, to kind of mitigate the itchiness of the fabric. Um, but this is a really, really nice mid-weight um, fabric that you could probably wear in the... Um, 50 to 60 degree weather with just a t-shirt and be fine um, but yeah it's a really really nice piece and again we have the uh, kofu detail on the hem there and we do have some darting here on the shoulders for some comfort purposes and yeah really happy with this piece i think it's going to be super wearable um, with the color and uh, with the oversized nature of it, uh, layering with this is going to be uh, very, very nice and fun to do. Um, this does uh, feature buffalo horn buttons as well. And uh, yeah, that is the lumber shirt in tweed fabric. Uh, moving on, I had been looking for an iris liner in my size for a decent price for a really, really long time. Um, so I just received this piece along with the um, next and final outerwear piece from the same seller as a bundle deal. Um, I was browsing through Grail and saw that he was selling both of them and I knew that um, I wanted both of the, both of the pieces. So uh, he offered me a bundle deal um, and I, it was an offer I couldn't really um, refuse. But for the Iris liners, if you guys aren't familiar, it does have a pretty uh, true to size and trim cut. Usually you're supposed to um, put these on the inside of your jackets and actually button them in and it acts as a liner mid layer um, for warmth. Um, I don't have any jackets that you can do that with, so mostly I'll be wearing this um, just as an outer layer, layer or kind of like an inner layering piece with something um, over it. But this is inspired from, from traditional military liners, um, you know, that they usually wore in World War II. So it has a pretty regular and trim cut with a uh, zipper front placket with this really nice herringbone reinforcement around the zipper. It does use a Swiss Riri zipper as you can see and the herringbone actually runs um, along the collar and the cuffs and the hem as well. It does have two inset pockets on the front here and they're slightly slanted. Um, these are sort of like patch coverall style um, pockets that you usually see. Uh, this one is a size three and from the spring summer 2018 collection. Um, and this one is actually mud over dyed as well um, at that same island in Amami, Oshima. And it leaves this with this really nice worn in textured um, kind of vintage character. Um, we do see a little bit of darting here on um, kind of like the top part of the shoulder um, for added comfort and uh, we do have adjustable sleeves as well as you can see uses this really nice damaged uh, silver snap button and you can pretty much taper the um, sleeves in for a more trim fit. 
So this piece actually is reversible, much like most of their liner jackets. So I'll go ahead and switch this over to the other side. Okay, so here is the reversible side of it. So pretty similar details as the previous side, but, but for this we have some rounded, uh, you know, patch pockets. We do have a similar reinforcement um, for the zipper and similar piping along the same places. However, this does feature um, some really cool paneling details along the arms and the armpits. Um, so it does panel the actual reverse reversible sides fabric on this uh, rayon side, as you can see. Some really nice detailing here. Um, I believe this side is actually nylon and then this side is a rayon. Um, both sides are extremely comfortable to wear and uh, this one is polyester filled, I believe. So it does offer some um, warmness to it. Uh, definitely acts as a good liner if, if that's what you want to use it for. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, I think the color is super, super handsome and um, it's gonna go well with much of the colors in my wardrobes. So those neutral earth tones like blues, uh, grays, beiges, things like that, I think this is gonna pair really well um, with the rest of my wardrobe. And to me, it's a no-brainer addition. So moving on to the last piece of outerwear, um, Probably one of the most unpractical items in my wardrobe, uh, considering where I live and then um, the silhouette itself of this. So this is the Fall Winter 17 uh, Sanjuro Kimono Down uh, jacket. And as you can see, it blends elements of US military MA-1 bomber jackets with the Japanese traditional kimono um, outerwear so this piece is definitely a staple from Visvim and as you can see it's a very interesting pairing of this Americana vibe with this Japanese vibe and I think they achieve it uh, very nicely and the subtle elements of Japanese flair with this Americana that VisVim loves so much really makes this a standout piece that um, makes people heads turn and is definitely going to get some compliments. But as you can see, it does have the traditional kimono style elements. So we have a um, half cut sleeve um, with this really nice hand stitch embroidery which runs down the um, hem as well as you can see um, it does have sort of like this Nakiri neck detail as you can see uh, much like most uh, kimonos are cut like so so it actually uh, stitches right here up to the neck and gives this really cool silhouette um, with the arms as you can see uh, it also does feature a kimono style collar it sort of tapers and folds over itself and it doesn't have any sort of closure it's sort of like a cardigan style jacket and then we do have um, going into the Americana elements a down filled jacket with these um, slanted inset pockets um, and there are snap closures with this really nice um, damaged silver snap buttons. Um, and we do also fee uh, see a MA1 style um, sleeve pocket as well. And then we have some cool patch detailing that definitely is reminiscent of the military um, aesthetic. Along with that, for this season they did do a safety orange liner. Um, this color is mostly seen in vintage bomber jackets and uh, the story behind it is if a pilot got lost in a crash he would actually flip his jacket um, inside out 
so that when people were going to search for him, they could see him stand out with this orange amongst the woods or the snow, wherever he actually got lost. It'd be a lot easier to see him from up above. And yeah, these, um, these are also mud dyed, so it leaves this really nice matte, um, worn in character. And this one also is a size three, just like the liner, and I think it fits me pretty well. You guys will see how it fits. But yeah, really happy with it. Um, the only reason I think it's very impractical is um, whenever it gets cold enough to wear something like this out, um, you're gonna end up having really cold arms because you do have this half cut um, sleeve detail. Uh, you could wear a sweatshirt or, or a hoodie under it, but I'm not really a big fan of that look. I typically like to see these with just a t-shirt and a pair of pants. Um, so it's this really weird in between um, weather-wise that that this will work in. Cold enough to where you'll need a down-filled um, jacket, but not cold enough to where your arms will be freezing. Um, so maybe right around that like 50, 60 degree weather you could do this. Um, but even the even in 60 degree, this down-filled might be a little bit too hot. But uh, yeah, so that is this jacket. Very interesting, uh, really cool blend of traditional Japanese and Americana elements and uh, super, super happy with it. And yeah, so that is the uh, outerwear section of the video. So we're gonna finish off with footwear. All right, and starting off the footwear section of the video, uh, first up we have these ICT Skagway High sneakers that are mud over dyed. Um, as you can see, this is a dark mud color. So we have this really, really deep, rich brown color. And uh, they do have a dissertation, I believe, if you guys wanna look into how they actually go about um, dyeing these. Um, but basically, uh, they use some sort of um, iron alkaline mixture that actually uh, helps this mud dye kind of hold true to whatever fabric or item it's dyed to. Um, so they pretty much immerse this with that alkaline reaction and then dip this in a um, vat of mud. Uh, and it leaves this with just this incredible dark mud color everywhere throughout. And the nice part about these is they will fade and age and wear um, the more you wear them. So I have a pair of mud dyed Virgils and I wore those for a month and they looked complete like night and day from when I started wearing them from um, till the end of that 30 day period. Um, so it's one of the things that I really like about Visvim uh, with these dyed products, how they will change and fade so quickly and uh, kind of fade to your personal ways of uh, wearing things and they'll scuff and they'll become, they'll become completely unique to you. Again, much like you see with um, denim, how your fades are completely unique to your body and uh, so on and so forth. So I've been wearing these uh, for the past couple of weeks and getting really nice fades and creases and excited to see how these uh, you know change over time one of the places that you see the most fading is on the tongue I mean that's where you get the most friction so as you can see there is uh, some pretty nice fading here along the tongue um, being ICT this does have a Kofu uh, fabric patch on the tongue there and the size tag itself is dyed and these are size nine. I would say these fit a little bit big, but uh, it's recommended to go, usually with Skagways, you wanna go half a size down. That's what I personally do. Uh, but for some reason with the mud dyed pairs, uh, the toe itself is super stiff. Um, so they actually, you need to size up from your true Skagway size. So I ended up going true to size on these and it actually worked out very well. 
Um, they're extremely comfortable and I'm just excited to see how these are going to fade and wear with me um, after, you know, a year of, of consistent wear. Um, but it, it does have the typical Skagway details where you see this leather um, chimney, um, this hand-stitched detail on the heel. Um, we have their traditional lightning um, piping, or I guess they call it taping along the midsole. And then we have this really nice staggered, um, I don't really know what to call it, but this detail here on the midsole, leather toe cap, and this really nice Japanese canvas. But yeah, that is the first pair. Super excited about these and uh, happy to add them to the collection. Second pair, we have a pair of boots that I really didn't need, um, but I saw them on eBay for a spectacular price and I decided to try them out um, to see how I would like them. I could always flip and it would be fine since I got them for a pretty good deal. Um, but once I got these in and started wearing them, I realized that I would never sell these and they quickly became one of the top pairs of boots um, in my collection. Uh, I tend to gravitate to these more than any other boot that I own at the moment. And uh, I'm really, really happy with my purchase. So for those of you who aren't familiar, these are the Fall Winter 17 um, Virgil boots in a vegetable tan suede. So this particular iteration of the Virgil boot um, has a really, really nice thick rough out um, suede. I believe this is a, a Swedish uh, suede and it's extremely thick and heavy. This is probably one of the heaviest boots that I've ever um, seen from Visvim. Um, you can really tell the construction and quality of it just from holding it in hand. Um, to go along with the uh, thick, chunky suede of the uppers, they actually um, made the midsoles of this one a lot bigger than the regular Virgil. As you can see, it actually is double stacked. So you have this panel here that makes the actual outsole a lot more chunky than the regular Virgil. Um, we do have a pair of raw leather laces, um, some really nice brass lacing hardware, and then the hand-painted tug tab. Um, these are size nine. I recommend going true to size with Virgils. Um, and yeah, really happy with the color of these and uh, the shape as well. I feel like I want to say these are like top three Virgils of all time and that's like a huge statement considering there's mud dyed Virgils, there's kangaroo leather Virgils, um, but for some reason the shape and the uh, suede texture of these make them my most favorite Virgil that I've ever owned and I would have never expected it and how cheap these were make it that much better. Um, of a purchase for me and yeah super super happy with these and yeah uh, moving on to the third pair of footwear for the video we have probably one of my grail boots that Vism has ever made uh, these are the uh, grizzly boots from fall winter 2012 uh, in my opinion probably one of the best grizzlies ever made and strictly, uh, it's because of the leather used on the uppers. Uh, so these ones use an incredible antelope leather um, for the top part of the uppers. And then they panel it with this really nice vegetable tanned uh, UK cowhide. Uh, but with the antelope leather specifically, um, the way this ages and wears in over time is absolutely incredible. Um, I've seen people's pairs um, get much, much lighter uh, with wear and show some really cool dark scuffs and marks from the hide. And it's just really cool to see all the different variations and how different they look after years of wear. And uh, so I'm really excited to uh, see how these age. Uh, I got them on Grailed and the guy 
uh, before me barely put any wear on his uh, he said he wore them once or twice and then put them in storage uh, so these have pretty much been sitting in storage since 2013 and so i'm excited to make them my own and break them in like they uh, really should have in the first place and uh, so if those of you who aren't familiar with the grizzly it has multiple panels of hand stitching um, along the toe sort of like a moccasin style and then he inputs some military elements with this um, canvas paneling on the shaft we do have some tonal rope lacing and uh, a hand painted tongue tab as you can see uh, these are tag size 9 most people recommend going a half size down with grizzlies but to me, these feel extremely true to size. They fit me perfectly and they're extremely, extremely comfortable. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited about these. I had been looking for this specific pair um, for a while. So I'm happy I found it in this condition and for the price I got it for. Um, it does also feature a brass Riri zipper uh, side split here for easy access to get them on. So this pair, along with the pink shaft pair, um, they're actually from the same season. Those two Grizzlies are pretty much um, like my favorites that they ever made. Um, the Isotan exclusive pairs are really cool too, and obviously the mud pairs. Um, but something about this antelope leather just intrigues me so much. So I'm glad I got these. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about these and hopefully I can wear the shit out of them and really scuff and beat them up like they were meant to be. And yeah. Uh, moving on to the last pair of boots uh, for the video. We have the new season fall winter 22 Brigadier boots in this incredible dark brown colorway. Uh, so, for this specific Brigadier, they are constructed using a vegetable tanned Italian horsehide leather. Um, and as you can see, this top upper portion is left relatively untreated, but then they do what we are now calling a ball sacking effect on the toe. And it leaves this with some really nice scarring, distressing, and natural wear kind of like on this toe and it's really really interesting to see kind of the different um, uh, variations in this hide as you continue to look at it um, everyone's pairs are different and uh, it's really cool to see all the different distressing and uh, variations in people's pairs um, even this one is different from the right pair as you can see this pair has a completely different color this one's way more um, light than the other and even has different distressing along the toe and that's one of the things I love about um, these types of footwear and items from Visvim where um, no two pieces are alike even the, the two you have aren't even alike so it's just really cool as you can see really cool scarring here effect on the toe but yeah so that is the brigadier the brigadiers typically have sort of like a cuban style um, heel we have some really nice brass rivets and lacing hardware uh, tonal cotton laces and then a hand painted tongue tab um, i went with true size with these and they fit me perfectly and they're a really handsome boot definitely for um, nicer occasions if you want to sort of go for a more dressed up look these are perfect and then you can also dress these down with jeans and a t-shirt just as well uh, but yeah really happy with these got a pretty decent deal considering their um, their new season and uh, got them uh, around 60% off for Black Friday so yeah really happy with these hopefully I can get some good wear out of them I do have about eight pairs of boots now in my collection, which is way too much alone, um, let alone for Florida. So it's either 
I'm gonna have to sell a few or really, really try to get good wear out of each one. Um, but yeah, so that is the Fall Winter 2022 Brigadier Boots Folk. And that uh, kind of concludes the footwear section of the video. So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, please comment down below what your favorite item from the video was. And also I'm curious to know what your guys' go-to pieces were for the Fall Winter 2022 collection. So also list those in the comments down below. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Grail. The links will be in the description below. And also don't forget to uh, put post notifications both on YouTube and Instagram so you don't miss any of the Vism content or the Vism listings that I'll be doing in the future. Uh, thank you guys so much for your continued support and love for the channel. Um, I really appreciate it and uh, thank you for watching.